guys to cryptos are us i am george a special live session for you guys sunday afternoon and that's because i feel compelled to talk about bitcoin but not only bitcoin but also eos i think it's time to sell 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 eos and buy 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 bitcoin yes that's right i'm gonna talk about dan liramir who all of a sudden decided to leave block one and basically leave eos and that is absolutely absolutely devastating and that is why i believe you need to sell eos right now like right now if you have any sell it now because it's going to tank a lot more and what you should do with that money is to buy bitcoin so thanks for tuning in guys as always smash up the likes subscribe to the channel if you are new i've been having a lot more live streams including one last night pretty good one almost 2300 people watching and uh you know what i'm gonna make a lot more video for you guys covering everything everything that's coming out and it's definitely an exciting time and there's gonna be a lot more things coming out right all right so um let's get started let's talk about eos first let's talk about dan learman let's look at his history because it's not it's not so good i mean it's good and it's not so good <laughs> First, let's look at uh, EOS's uh, uh, chart, and you can see a big drop off the cliff, right? Down 17% today, around $3. I mean, granted, if you zoom out a little bit, $3 isn't the low point. EOS has been a little bit lower. It has been climbing up recently, but, you know, to be honest, within the last few months, EOS has really not moved compared to some of the other altcoins out there, right? Like if you look at Cardano, Polkadot, they have all been doing much, much better. And Ethereum, Litecoin, I mean, any of the top guys have been doing better than EOS. So this actually was not a big surprise. And this has been rumored for quite a long time, but... Uh, before I uh, before I get into the charts, let's look at this. So big news: EOS plummets after Block One CTO Dan Learmere resigns. Resigns, and uh, it's kind of pathetic too because he announced his resignation on Voice, which was hyped up to be the next Facebook. This has been ongoing for a while. EOS, I remember those of you guys remember in 2000, I think 19 EOS pumped up to twenty dollars because there was like a huge announcement, and a huge announcement was Voice. And it's been two years now, over two years, Voice is still in beta. It's still a crappy social media. And Dan has the balls to actually put his resignation on Voice, saying that he's no longer part of Block One or Voice or EOS, and that he's going to be doing something else. Something else. You know, my mission to create a free market, voluntary solutions for securing life, liberty, property, and justice for all, blah, blah, blah. What he means is, yes, I'm on to the next project to make me some more millions and billions of dollars. That's ultimately what's happening right now. Dan has a really bad reputation for just leaving projects unfinished because he either thinks the work is too hard ahead of time or he gets distracted and he wants to focus on something else. Remember when Voice came out, it was during you know Facebook, Mark, uh, this whole thing about uh, Cambridge Analytica, if Facebook has too much power, too much censorship, right? That's when Dan tried to steal the thunder and say, hey, we're going to create a better version of Facebook, a decentralized one, right? And that's how voice came to be. Now, he's saying he wants to work more on stuff that's, that relates to censorship-resistant tools because of what's going on right now with Twitter and Facebook blocking, blocking Trump and so forth, right? He's just like hopping on one bandwagon to another. So hopefully... If he does come out with another project, all of us don't get fooled into thinking that he's actually going to stay because he's not. He's not. This has this has been ongoing for quite some time. So in case you don't know his history, in 2013, he actually created BitShares. And BitShares is like kind of like a weird DEX if you if if those of you guys have used it. it it's a really weird way to trade. And it's utilizing uh, like these virtual tokens that that is like a placeholder, and it was it was just weird, but it was kind of like a first of its kind. And guess who he started that with? He started that with uh, Charles Hoskinson. 
So he was not alone in that. <laughs> and uh, and you know what? All of a sudden, three years later, he decided, remember, three years, uh, he decided to start Steemit. And you know what? Steam is kind of like a decentralized version of Reddit, but with a token structure. But it was a very weird token structure. You have Steam it tokens and like other other tokens. I forgot what you call it, power tokens or something like that. And you just had to keep like, you know, there was like all this stuff. It's just very confusing. And Steam it was doing pretty well. I, honestly, it was gaining on Reddit for a while. I remember in 2017, there was a lot of traction until all of a sudden, he's like, nope. I'm done, you know, steam it, can't be fixed, whatever, and he decided to start EOS, and obviously he held that one year, one year long ICO and raised over $4 billion, $4 billion, I believe that is the largest ICO ever in history, I don't think anything has beaten that, Telegram maybe, but I don't even think Telegram was up to $4 billion. I think Telegram was up to like $2, $2 billion, right? Um, so obviously EOS raised an enormous amount of money. He basically said, I'm here forever. I'm not going to leave. You know, I'm going to build EOS into something great and I'm just going to keep working at it, working at it, working at it. Well, he said that before, just like when he left steam it, like this article or someone mad writing, uh, writing about this, you know, Dan just says, ah, I'm, I'm just done with steam it when steam it was basically, uh, falling down. Right. And now steam it has been bought by Tron, which um basically it's 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 a dead project i don't even know what what justin plans on doing with it but anyways i mean this this is the history right so remember he left BitShares in about three years he left steam uh only one year and then now he le he leaves eos three years right just like that so that's his timetable three years is maximum um and yeah and i think the reason why he's leaving eos or block one um, is because he realizes EOS is unfixable at this point. And what I mean by that, well, because unlike other projects, you know, he was kind of the first to prove to push delegated proof of stake, but he didn't think about it entirely. Okay. So other projects have followed EOS's footsteps, but have fixed it. The problem with EOS is it's too centralized. Dan was focusing on speed so he's like in order to have speed right you have to make the node count smaller so there's what in yields world called block producers so there's only 21 of them so the 21 of them can control the entire network they have all the decision making in the world and they can they can censor um things and they can lock out accounts and so forth for security reasons but the problem is those 21 block producers are voted in and because they're rewarded with EOS tokens, they don't have a dual token setup like all these other projects. Like VeChain has dual token setup to kind of prevent this, right? EOS doesn't. So the 21 block producers, they're making all the EOS from staking, from being a block producer. And then, you know what? They're so rich and powerful, they just vote each other in. So basically the 21 block producers continue to be the block producers and there's no fair vote anymore so there's collusion right it's unfairness the rich gets richer right so this kind of setup is broken and yields can't fix it it's been three years now they've been talking about trying to fix this but they can't they're, they they just don't know how at this point um and i believe that's the reason why dan quit because he can't solve this problem when other projects they were a little bit later, they saw this problem and they decided to fix it. They forked it and they added another token or something like that. Data is another example. Data has their own data tokens, but they also have T fuel tokens, right? So all these projects have moved to, to dual token setups for this reason, but EOS did not. So I believe this is the biggest reason why, because he just thinks this is unfixable or it's too big. I'm not going to do it. So basically he's like, I'm out of here. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I'll be the first to admit that in 2017, I was really gung-ho on EOS because, you know what, I was looking at Ethereum, looking at some of these other ones that were up and coming, like even Tron and also, of course, Cardano and some of the other ones that were doing really well, VeChain, um, EOS looked very, very promising, 
right? They seem to have it together. They have such a large treasury. Dan is expert at delegate proof of stake, right? And they had a lot of momentum. So I was really behind them until I realized that it was all smoke and mirrors because I've been waiting for voice to be done for three years or two years and it's just going nowhere. It's still in beta. And I saw, um, uh, what's that guy? Uh, the other guy, maybe the CEO of uh, Block One, um, Brock Pierce. You know, I, I saw him do like some kind of like discussion with, I believe, the Block producers. This was about a year ago. Like he had an internal meeting, they filmed it, they put it up, and basically he was addressing either the block producers or the crowd or something. And he was talking about how, yes, we still have this problem with collusion, with centralization, and we're still working at it. And it's two years afterwards and nothing, literally nothing was done. So that's when I realized, I don't think this project is going to go anywhere. And then now, this is basically a nail in the coffin. With him out, right, just look at what happened to Steam It. Look at what happened to uh, look at what happened to BitShares. After he's out, EOS is done. As far as I'm concerned, EOS will slowly die. So from this three dollars, it's gonna go lower. It's gonna go to two dollars. Go to one dollar. It's gonna be sub one dollar pretty soon. So that is why, in my opinion, um, if you have EOS, you should sell it. Sell it ASAP. Sell it ASAP because this this is gonna be a dying project. And watch, Dan will release his next big prompt hyped up project pretty soon. And then most people will basically try to convert to that. Um, and then you'll see. You'll see. Anyways, so that's what I want to talk about with EOS. I'm very, very disappointed. As you can tell, I'm a little mad um, at Dan and, and this whole thing. You know, it's, uh, it's a shame. A lot of you guys I know, big EOS fans, right? Um, been holding EOS for a while. Been waiting for all coin season for it, for it to come back up. But... Uh, that's not going to happen. That, that's not going to happen. It'll never go back up to $20 again. I doubt it'll ever go up even past $3 from now on. So that's EOS. Okay, so moving on, what about something that's better? Something that's way better, arguably the best that you can buy, and that is, of course, um, that is, of course, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is showing a little bit of weakness today. But not really. It's still hovering at 38,000. Just yesterday, we were when I was streaming, it was about like 39,000. Pumped up to 41,000, came back down to 40,000. Right now is a very good, good consolidation period. And for those of you guys that keep complaining that Bitcoin goes up and up and up and up and you don't have an opportunity to buy, well, uh, the opportunity is presenting itself, so don't miss out. Now, this is not a really tremendous drop, right? I, I know that. Uh, it's actually a really weak and tame drop. However, for those of you guys that are day trading and you know what you're doing, these, these types of drops are like really good. They're godsend. You could play these, these 1,000, 2,000 point drops pretty good. But for holders, uh, no, you don't want to do that. You want to take the opportunity to buy, right? You're either dollar cost averaging or you're buying the dips, right? And this is one of those ones. It's a small little dip. You know what? It's a good pickup time because guess what's going to happen? Last time, Bitcoin dip over here, right? Uh, some people were freaked out by it, whatever, and, and this is what came afterwards, okay? So, <laughs> so right now, uh, I see this as a beautiful gift for those people that have been sitting on the sidelines thinking Bitcoin is just too high, too high, too high, although this is still very high. But let's not forget, whatever we're at now, 38000 40,000, 42,000 will still be much cheaper than where it will be two years from now. No, let's not even do two years now. One year from now, six months from now, right? This is, this is really just a, cons a consolidation period for Bitcoin. It needs it. It needs it. We've been going up so fast, so fast. I, I had lines drawn before, you know, like at 19.5, it took Bitcoin about... 23 days to break through that then it only took eight days to break through 24 2 then it only took like two days to break through 34 right and then it took basically like one day or two days to break 40 so we need a slowdown slowdown is good it's good it lets things reset a little bit 
and also helps altcoins because usually when there's a slowdown some of the money flows in altcoins right so we have seen altcoins do relatively well the last few weeks so this is one of the things that helps right so uh right now is definitely sell yields and you don't know where to put that money put it into bitcoin this is a good opportunity to put some into bitcoin right now all right so what else is there about bitcoin i have a treat for you guys before i get to it i did see plan b post this so this is the stock to flow model right and right now right now if you look at this versus 2017 hmm uh it looks it, overall if you look at this very very similar right besides our uh covid pandemic drop over here oh, almost identical so as you see, Bitcoin's going up and up and up. It's starting to turn orange, but not really, barely turning orange. So that looks like it's right around here. In fact, it actually looks more like it's over here because this is when it's turning a little bit orange. But guess what happened, right? So this happened, and that means, yeah, we're, we're far off from that. Obviously, when you're comparing previous times, you know, previous past, previous cycles, it tends to rhyme, right? Doesn't mean it has to be identical, but it tends to rhyme. And we know right now things are going up in a big way because of institutional buying, right? Retail FOMO didn't really hit yet, but that's when at the tail end of this, when everything goes up, it's going to just go be sky high. Now, the good thing is, this is what I've been saying. We'll see if it's true or not. I believe this time around, after this is complete and Bitcoin is well above 100,000, it doesn't do this. These two, you know, these previous 86% drops, I'm just saying I don't think it's going to come because, because the institutions, they don't have weak hands like retail investors. When they buy, they're buying for the long haul. And then they dollar cost average, they buy whenever they can to basically hold for a long haul, right? So they don't have weak hands like retail investors. So once Bitcoin goes up and stays up and gets into the yellow point, it may just stay there. It just may just like flatline, right? Once we get up there. So that is what I'm thinking. And we'll see if it's right. I mean, it, we don't have to wait too long. Just have to wait a year. We'll see if it's right or not. But I do believe this time around, this cycle becomes kind of like a super cycle. And it just kind of breaks through previous cycles where Bitcoin falls down 85% because to me, it just doesn't make any sense that it would do so. Uh, morning, was this reason Stellar went up cause, cause because XRP trouble? Yes and no. And no, uh, the, um, Ukraine also declared that they're looking at a centralized um, stable coin that, um, that they, um, they're, I don't know, partner up they contracted Stellar to help them build it. Let's just put it that way. So that's what caused it to go up. Uh, Crypto Frog, appreciate that. Now, I want to show you guys. I think you guys will get a, a kick out of this. I have found Peter Schiff 2.0. One that none of, none of us have really heard of before. But turns out this guy is a big gold bug. And he's been making a fool of himself on CNBC and on TV for quite a long time almost as long as peter schiff so uh i'm gonna play a clip for you guys actually a few clips to kind of show you either he's clueless ignorant or being naive or all three all of the above i think it's number one because he just sounds like he's really clueless all right so let me uh let me get this ready for you guys So first, I want to show you this clip. And some of you guys may have seen this before. So this is the guy that went on air on CNBC, and he was brought on to be a Bitcoin bear. And this was in 2013, March of 2013, when Bitcoin first crossed $100. $100, okay? How many of you guys would cut off your arm or leg to be able to buy Bitcoin at $100, right? I mean, think about it. But this guy, uh, <laughs> um, Pento, I believe his name is Michael Pento, went on air and debated why Bitcoin is not going to last. But this is just the beginning. This is the beginning. I can understand how a lot of people could be wrong in 2013, but I'm going to show you a trend how 
his thought process did not change at all. So first, let's look at this. You exchange your dollars, you exchange your euros, whatever. You go onto these networks, and they, it, it's an accepted currency, and it's zooming in value lately. Just un unbelievable how much this has taken off. Um, and, and, and there are places that are beginning to actually accept this sort of universal digital currency, kind of operates in the shadows, not regulated, but it's, an, it, it's a total outgrowth of people getting start, starting to get worried about these currency crises, debt crises. Where are these things accepted? Still not a lot of places. I, I, I checked out online. Not a lot of websites that you would recognize, but the places are kind of novelty clothing, gaming sites. Yeah, wait for it. Porn. Some of those places. But, you know, there are a lot of drawbacks. There are a lot of fears that I'm sure that our guests are going to talk about. But this tells you how really insecure people are in this age of debt and, and currency crises and all the other things that we have going on in the world. First, I have to give Bitcoin creators uh, credit. At least they, tr they know enough not to trust fiat money that's controlled by our government, but yeah. we, they're trying to reinvent the wheel and they've come up with a flat tire. We already have a perfect real form of money and it's called gold. Money has to have uh, four elements. It has to be very rare, indestructible, divisible without losing its purchasing power and cannot be increased by fiat. And, and, and Bitcoin's... He named four things, right? And Bitcoin fits all four things. Fail on the first two. They are not rare and they are very much destructible. Had PayPal invented Bitcoin, we'd all be heralding it as the most important financial revolution since the internet, since the credit card, perhaps. And oh, that's important. PayPal. PayPal. I guess I would say, as for those first two points, as to it being uh, destructible and rare, I, I guess I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, gold is only rare because it's physically scarce, but right. Bitcoin is rare because it counts on the scarcity of CPU time. And so, I think likewise, as to destructibility, I think that's also sort of in question. What are, what are the chances of someone coming up with a counterfeit Bitcoin? And they present <laughs> that to, a, to a, a, an end user, and they're accepting this, this phony Bitcoin. I guess the chances would be astronomically low, and that's the whole design. I mean, the Why way that? that you the way that you create a Bitcoin is that you basically have to find a larger, rare number, uh, bigger than any of the other Bitcoin out there. And so every Bitcoin, the next Bitcoin is even harder to create. And so I'd say right now it requires vast amounts of CPUs, generally through Amazon Cloud and things right. like this, to create the next Bitcoin. So it'd be exceedingly impossible or exceedingly difficult to so, create a counterfeit so, Bitcoin. So, well, hack, so hacking Bitcoin could be a problem, but what about someone coming up with a counterfeit? that end users don't recognize as being counterfeit and then well, eroding the purchasing power of all existing yeah, you... <laughs> this guy first of all he has, he has he, he can't argue anything so he's trying to think of something counterfeit bitcoin okay maybe it's not possible to hack but what if someone comes out with a fake one like this guy has no clue how bitcoin works but uh okay you guys I, I guess one of my concerns here too is that you know there's a lot of stories about drug dealers using these kind of things and i think it's just a matter of it's not regulated it's not controlled the whole the whole bitcoin market is about a billion dollars it's a novelty yeah. for the geek squad I, I can assure you if these became well promulgated then the u.s government would shut it down and just to well, just to give our just to give our viewers some perspective there's about four trillion dollars in currency trading every day and as michael said it's about a billion dollars worth of bitcoins it has quintupled in value over the last year a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin has jumped up to seven hundred billion dollars. Seven hundred X since when this occurred. Think about that. Just just since the, the Cyprus thing came up, it's up over twenty percent. Over the last month or about a couple months, it's up over forty percent. So it's actually getting some visibility out there. Again, you can go online and go to places where bitcoins are accepted, and there are dozens of places. No websites that you would actually that, that you know. If I said them, oh yeah, I, I, I know that. But it's just going to be very interesting to see just how much this catches on. It just sounds so silly, but maybe it's not. David, how much? Have uh, re real quick, uh, I just want to go back. I hate to interrupt you guys. But look at this, gold in 2013 was $1,600, okay? Today, it's $1,800. So within this last seven years, now eight years, no, seven and a half years, uh, gold went up basically only $200, while Bitcoin went up 700%. Seven, no, 700X, right? So this is the difference between holding gold and holding Bitcoin.
Right. David, how much of your uh, wealth will you place in bitcoins? What percentage well, would you I guess would you I, store? I believe that uh, for any sort of a highly diversified portfolio, something like bitcoin is going to play an increasing role. But it could, be, it could be wiped it moves out in, such in a way. If it, if, it ever, if it is widely promulgated and the exponential increase of someone trying to hack it, because there will be many more people trying to hack it, goes up. Well, I guess what? you're assuming that merely that because you can theorize the possibility that's going to happen, I would say. Mm -hmm. Your purchasing power can be wiped out in a nanosecond, and that's why it would never be widely accepted in this I country. hear you say that, but that doesn't make it true. And <laughs> that's the best response you could have against someone just talking nonsense. I hear you say that, but that doesn't make it true. So Michael Pinto, as you can see, just totally clueless on Bitcoin. He had his opportunity, just like Peter Schiff. At least here, he had an opportunity to buy it at 100 But Peter Schiff seems like he had an opportunity to buy even less, around $1 or $10. So that's why I label him Peter Schiff 2.0, right? So obviously, very clueless. Since 2013, like, he had no clue. But then I decided, I'm like, okay, has this guy learned, right? Has he actually been learning from his mistakes about Bitcoin. So by the way, this is his website, Pinto Portfolio Strategies. I mean, to me, just looking at this just looks like a really, <laughs> does not look like someone that I would put my money with and invest. And he wants an annual fee of 1.5%. Uh, had he just invested a little amount in Bitcoin, he would not have to work a day ever again. But anyways, uh, going back, so fast forward, I saw this, he wrote this, October 4th in 2017, Bitcoin is not new and improved money. And uh, to save you guys some, some time from reading this long article, basically, let's, let's just sum up here. Gold is money. There is no need to invent a new and improved version of it. There is, however, a need for gold, real money, to be made into a more efficient currency. And there are already companies that fulfill that role by using a gold-backed private blockchain. Therefore, the perfect form of money, thanks to technology, has now become the perfect currency as well. So unless you need a mechanism to conduct illicit transactions, there isn't any role for Bitcoin to fulfill. Gold is money. A new and improved version does not exist. Yes, so as you can see, fast forward four years later, Michael still believes that gold is what you should hold on and gold is money and Bitcoin is not money. Okay, so that was three years ago. That was before Bitcoin went to 20,000 and crashed, right? Has he learned anything since then? Well, I found the unpublished, uh, unpublished video where again, Michael Pinto is now debating this other guy, Sifidine. And I looked up who this guy is because he's actually really well-spoken. He is actually uh, a PhD, assistant professor of economics at Lebanese American University. So has Michael learned anything else? This was back in 2019. So again, two years later, and he's still making the same arguments. Where it fails. And Phil asked the question, cryptocurrencies are not money. And the reason why they are not money and never will be is because money must be both two things, primarily. Of course, it has to be portable. That, that would help. Um, but they have to be rare and virtually indestructible. So this is where cryptocurrencies fail. This is why Bitcoin went from 20,000 to where it's below 4,000 today. There's supposed to be a limited number of cryptocurrencies correct especially bitcoin it's 21 million or 20 21 million, million. Yeah. 21 million units unless of course bitcoin were to fork or split like an english muffin oh he he thinks that he's smart he thinks he's smart because because he knows what fork means this is something that gold could never do in other words god exploded stars created the element Number 79 on the periodic table. There's only 118 elements that are stable and atoms in the atomic form. And they're, they're precious and virtually indestructible. Only a very small number of these elements. And they're not creating any new ones yet. Bitcoin can split. You can make Bitcoin cash. You can make Bitcoin gold. It takes hours to create a new cryptocurrency. There's 1,600 cryptocurrencies out there in the world. There's new ones created every day. And this is why they are not rare. Now, you could come back and say to me, Michael, 
Bitcoin is different from Ethereum and it's different from Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash is different from Bitcoin Gold. And I'm going to tell you, no, these are commodities. They try to accomplish the same thing overall in general, because there's a difference between gold and there's a difference between platinum. But they, they're the same thing. They're virtually indestructible and very rare elements. So cryptocurrencies in their, in their base form are methods of transacting currencies on this anonymous, immutable, and decentralized ledger. And therefore, they become commodities, and they are not rare, and hence can never be money. Like, I like how like he just like counteracted himself. <laughs> He's talking about gold and then platinum, right? He's saying how gold is rare, right? But gold is a mineral. It, it, it's something you could dig out of ground, which you can also dig other stuff like silver and copper and platinum, right? They're all minerals. So I, I, I love how he's like trying to prove a point, but he's counteracting his own point. So I'm last thing I, I promise I'll just show you I'll just show you what uh, Safadin his uh, comeback to this is, which. He explained it brilliantly, and Michael still did not understand. Okay, great. So I have to say this is uh, this is a good uh, place to start. This is a good argument. But the thing is, um, Bitcoin and all the others are different from one another in a very similar way in which gold is different from metals, from all other metals. So, you know, nobody says gold can't be money because there are all these other metals out there where you can make a lot of tungsten tungsten's close enough to gold you can make gold coins similar to tungsten but that doesn't work right that's not an argument that works against gold because at the end of the day if you want it gold you can find out that this is not gold and then you reject it and then the price of gold continues to be unaffected by the inflation in copper or tungsten um so the same thing happens in bitcoin we have to remember because Bitcoin is the only one from all of these, the only one that can have a chance at becoming immutable is Bitcoin. So the, the, all of the rest of them, they're just essentially Ponzi schemes and get-rich-quick schemes uh, because there's a group of people behind them that can control them, that can change them, that can... Okay, I'll, I'll stop right there. Now, that, that last time I might, may piss off some of you guys that all, all coins are just basically Ponzi schemes, but... You could tell that he's a big one maximalist. But what he's saying is exactly true. People that say, oh, Bitcoin is not rare. You can always fork off like Bitcoin gold, cash or whatever, right? Yeah, they might try to steal Bitcoin's name, but they're not Bitcoin. Just like the metals. Just like silver is different from copper and it's different from gold. You can't make an argument that gold is money because, uh, because you can't replicate it. Right, but there's different kind of minerals out there too. It's the same thing with Bitcoin and all coins. So, I think Sevadine made a really good point. And if you listen to the rest of this, I mean, first of all, I love his voice. It's a very European deep voice that sounds really nice. It just makes him sound a lot smarter. <laughs> but uh, it's unfortunate because this is an unlisted, um, unlisted video. I think I'll post this up in the comments for those of you guys who want to listen to the rest of this. But basically, my point is Michael Pinto is Peter Schiff 2.0, except I don't believe, unlike Peter, which I believe is kind of pretending at this point, I don't believe Michael is pretending. I, I just feel like he's a dumbass, honestly. He's just a pure, ignorant, naive dumbass that hasn't learned, pretends, or not no, not pretends, just refuses to listen to what people are saying, what people are trying to educate on, and, and this is the end result. But anyways, that's it. All right, let's go back to to uh, Bitcoin because some of you guys are panicking, saying, "Oh no, Bitcoin is falling! Bitcoin is falling!" Just like at the beginning of the stream, I talked about EOS, how you should just sell EOS, but on the flip side, you should buy Bitcoin, right? Because when are you supposed to buy Bitcoin? You're not supposed to buy when it reaches a new high. <laughs> You're not supposed to be buying Bitcoin and FOMOing in when it's at forty-two thousand plus. You're supposed to buy on weakness. You're supposed to buy on the dips, right? Or you dollar cost average. So to me, this is a great opportunity to get in some cheap Bitcoins. I tweeted it out this morning that we're gifted with some cheap Bitcoins. And that is exactly what's going on right now. Bitcoin is basically taking a step back. It's not like we haven't seen it before. 
but this is a really, really good opportunity to pick up some cheap Bitcoins before the next leg up like this. We saw something similar, you know, at the beginning of the, I mean, this seemed like it was so long ago, but this actually was only seven, eight days ago when Bitcoin first hit 34,000 and then it started coming down. It dropped pretty hard to 27,000 before it recovered to 30s. And people were like, oh no, oh no, it's about to go down. Uh, you know, guess what happened? You know, all it, all Bitcoin needed was to take a break and then boom, right? So right now, 40,000, you know, it came really, really fast. So even if it hovers here, even if it just hovers here for a little bit, that would be fantastic. Let's Bitcoin take a breather, right? Get ready for the next leg up and it could help altcoins in a big way, you know, because when usually Bitcoin takes a breather, some of that money flows out. So we'll see. All right, guys. Uh, let me, uh, let me, first of all, I don't need this headset anymore. Let's do some uh, Q&A. Hey, you know, I laugh at these situations because all this is kind of like pre-programmed by the whales for bot to do. Bots look at certain situations, they'll sell and buy. Sometimes they try to cause a panic sell, you know, to get people to, to sell with them so they could buy back at a cheaper price at getting more Bitcoins. But the problem is every time the whales try to do that now, and you have, we have seen it periodically, um, if you zoom in a little bit, you know, there'll be periods where Bitcoin just kind of falls, right? And guess what happens? A V-shaped recovery comes right back. And that's because the whales and the smart retail investors, they're buying the dips, right? So it would not surprise me. We're going to see a V-shaped recovery pretty soon, right? And then the whales, they're losing. Every time they do this, they lose a little bit more Bitcoin, a little bit more Bitcoin. It's going straight into the pockets of institutions, and you know what? They can only do this for so long until they, they just get completely wrecked and run out of Bitcoin. So, I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it now. Every time I see these kind of opportunities, I think it's great. I think it's really great. Pick some up while you can because you're supposed to. And uh, you know what? You laugh at the whales because what they're trying to do is going to fail. Institutions, they're the best at what they do. They have way more money than these whales who are like small little fish in a big ocean. So the only thing is, you know what? Take the opportunity, follow what the big money is doing, follow in their footsteps. And what they're doing is buying up all the Bitcoins they can right now, as much of it as possible. And that is the right way to do it. All right, Xana is getting banned. I think Bitcoin move is a silent before a hurricane. I, I agree with that. A anything right now. Anything right now. It's like, it's like, I don't know how anyone like can panic over Bitcoin right now. <laughs> Blade Runner, you're late. I don't know how anyone can panic over Bitcoin right now. Seeing the tremendous run that we have had, right? I know people are, some people are still wary, but seeing how since... December 16th, that's less than a month, Bitcoin has literally doubled. Within three weeks, Bitcoin has doubled. I don't know why anyone is panicking at this point. I was just telling um, uh, to some of my Patreon members this morning, even if Bitcoin fell 50% from 40,000, right? Some people are saying, oh, doomsday drop is coming. Okay, hypothetical. Say Bitcoin starts from yesterday to today and moves on and for this entire week it falls. It falls 50%, 50% from 40,000. 
it's at 20,000. That 20,000 is still higher than what Bitcoin was less than four weeks ago when Bitcoin was still below 19.5. So just think about that. <laughs> Take a second and think about it. So I don't know how anyone could be panicking at this point. Had you been buying Bitcoin low, been accumulating or dollar cost averaging, you're well, well, well into the green, right? So this is not time to be panicking. But for those of you guys that are new to the game, right? This is what you call an opportunity to dollar cost average. As simple as that, right? Either you do it on a schedule, you ignore price. Hey, every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, I'm going to buy a little bit. Your dollar cost averaging for long haul, or you're waiting for opportunities where you do see a little pullback, a little breather. You buy it, right? And then you wait for it to come back up. In Bitcoin, the richest people in Bitcoin, the ones that have made the most, like the Winker Vosses or Max Kaiser, Chamath, Tim Draper, Mike Novogratz, um, even you can put Michael Saylor in there, even though he's been only holding for about four months. But all these guys, the ones that made the most money in Bitcoin has done exactly that. Dollar cost average, buy and hold. The longer you hold, the more you make. It's simply that easy. <laughs> Worst, EOS or XRP? Uh, you know what? Recently, I was just joking about this too. A lot of people have been like, and I'm not going to call out names, but a lot of these other channels started making real like outrageous claims about Ethereum, right? Like Ethereum is going to go to 27,000 or Ethereum is going to go to 50,000 when they know that it's not likely or ever going to happen because you have to apply some math to that. Ethereum has 115 million um, supply and it's only going up because it's inflationary. So you times that by 27,000 or 50,000, you'll see um, <laughs> that's in trillions upon trillions upon trillions, right? Which will make them, which will make Ethereum bigger than, than Microsoft and Apple combined. So is that likely? No. Is it going to happen? Unlikely. Um, but the only reason why I bring that up is because like people are falling for these kind of like clickbait like predictions. So I was thinking I should just make one saying that XRP will go up to 50,000, right? I I'm just going to do one. Say XRP is going to go to 50,000 and I want to see how many people actually click into it <laughs> because it seems like it's, it works. <laughs> but that, that should be your answer. Uh, anyways, EOS, in case you guys didn't watch the beginning sell it sell it now this is something that dan always does he gets bored he realizes he creates a project and it can't be fixed because he didn't think all the way through and he's basically ditching eos and eos was go collapse collapse through basically nothing for the last three years they have done absolutely nothing with the project so sell it and if you go sell it you might as well buy bitcoin with it that's the best way to do it now, I'm going to say something that's going to be very unpopular, okay? I'm just going to say it. And this is going to be very unpopular for some of you guys. Um, you know, Dan Larimer has created three projects, right? Do you know anyone else that have also been involved with three different projects? Three prominent projects. I'll give you a second to think about it. Anyone else? that has been involved with three projects. No? I don't see anyone making making comments about it. Charles Hoskinson. Charles Hoskinson has also been involved with three projects. In case you guys didn't know, Dan Laramere started BitShares with Charles. So that's project number one. Charles was also, of course, part of EOS. I mean, <laughs> not EOS, Ethereum. Project number two, and he's involved with Cardano. But here's the thing. He has an out with Cardano because he is not directly part of the project. He is the founder and I believe CEO of IOHK, which is a development and consulting firm, which has been hired to work on Cardano. And I said this years ago, right? 
it, it would not be surprising one day when Cardano is done. I mean, obviously, there's still a lot of work to be done. It would not surprise me that once Cardano is done, Charles says, OK, Cardano no longer needs us. IOHK is not going to be involved with Cardano anymore. I would not be surprised to hear that in the future. So I'm just going to throw that out there. That may be unpopular to hear, but just be prepared for that. Charles is not the CEO or founder of Cardano. He is just contracted to work on Cardano right now. So keep that in mind. One day, Charles may say IOHK is no longer part of Cardano. So could be following the footsteps of Dan Learmere. I'm just warning you guys ahead of time. Although that may not happen, Charles may have a lot more integrity than Dan, may stick with it for a long haul, right? Since he's a crypto billionaire already, so it doesn't really matter. So he might be different, but I'm just saying ahead of time. Very, the two are very similar. You know, fumble the face. I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. I think you're right and you're wrong, right? Um, the right thing is people are very impatient in the crypto space. And that's true. That's true. Um, because a lot of these projects have only been out two to three years. And I'll, I'll agree with that 100%. Right? Like, for example, EOS has been three, three years. Cardano's not have done, but it's three years. Um, Polkadot, less than that, like two years. Chainlink, you know, about two, three years, right? So a lot of these projects are very, 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 very early stage. And they have, some of them have accomplished a lot. And if you look at like the early days of Amazon, early days of Microsoft and Google, it took them years upon years before they got traction. So if you compare the two, very similar, right? Decentralization, blockchain is a new wave is web 4.0 or 5.0, however you define it, right? And some of these companies may become behemoth companies of tomorrow. But here is the difference. Here is the biggest difference between crypto, altcoin projects, versus the early days of tech companies. The evaluations of these projects is insane. Insane for what they have accomplished. The early days of Microsoft and early days of Google were not, they were not $10 billion companies. They were startup companies that got seed money for like $10,000, $20,000 at that time, $50,000, maybe a million dollars. That's how much seed money they got. They were hungry and they kept building and building and building. The difference is these companies have raised enormous amounts of money. Their market cap is insane. It does not justify what they have done, and that is the biggest difference. So while Microsoft and Google and Amazon, they could have gone up a million percent since their early days, can something like Cardano or Polkadot or Chainlink go up a million percent from already six billion, eight billion, nine billion? The answer is no. So that's the difference, right? So you have to recognize that. Some people just don't some people just ignore market cap. They just look at price. They're like, okay, Cardano's at 30 cents. So that means someday it could go to like $2,000 or maybe $5,000 or $10,000. Just like the people who think XRPs will go to $589. People just focus on a small number and then they think it could go up like a million percent. But you got to realize you got to look at the circular supply and you have to look at the market cap. You have to see how big it is already. Can XRP go to $589? That would give them like hundreds of trillions of market cap. That'll never happen. That's more than the total, total assets of the world, right? So you have to do the math and realize what people are saying. Don't fall for those traps. So that's what I was saying. I agree with you. Whoever made that comment, I forgot your name. But I also don't agree with you because crypto market cap is very different from market cap of traditional companies. W, yes. Yes, we're screwed. You should sell now. <laughs> no. I, I, just, I just got done saying no. 
I, I again, I, I don't get why. I think some of you guys may be just very new, or maybe you're just pretending. How can anyone panic about Bitcoin being at thirty six thousand when we were just at nineteen five less than three weeks ago? I mean, give me one reason why you should be panicking. And let's zoom back. Uh, yeah, go back to October. Bitcoin is in ten thousand, so we have literally four x since. Uh, since October, November time frame, right? So you see these opportunities and you should be happy. You got to train yourself to think Bitcoin is so high. Do you want to buy at $42,000 while it's still going up? Do you want to FOMO in while it's going up? Or do you want to wait for good opportunities to buy? And right now it's one of those opportunities, right? Even then, this is, I don't know, this is pretty weak in my opinion. Um, Obviously, look at look at this, okay? Even if you don't go back that far. Just just look at this, right? January 6. That was 4 days ago, guys. January 6, 4 days ago, Bitcoin was at 345. Less than a week ago, Bitcoin was at 345. So, we are still $2,000 more than what Bitcoin was 4 days ago. So, Forget the three-week analogy. Let's just look at four days ago, right? So anyone that is truly panicking at this point, you need to retrain yourself and think, this is actually a pretty good buying opportunity. Because if you could buy at $36,000 and next week, tomorrow, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, it goes back up to $42,000, guess what? If you had a single Bitcoin, you would make $6,000. You would make 20%. That's how you have to train your brain. Instead of thinking, oh, it's panic selling time. No, you should thinking, oh, it's panic buying time. That's the big difference. <laughs> uh, Roman, I don't like IOTA. I think IOTA is a project you should sell. They have worked on, they have worked on that, you know, that stupid coordinator node for like four years and their wallets and everything else. And as far as I know, they're still not done. They're worse than EOS in terms of progress. So they were really hyped up back in 2017, 2018. They have fallen to basically a very low point. And that's because people have given up on them. It's just, there's no point. No point of holding on. What about XRP? Is this still a sell well? I think so. Um, XRP seems to have stabilized around 22 cents and now it's come up a little bit, but still, um, I don't think they're going to drop as hard as EOS because, you know, this is an ongoing lawsuit and Brad didn't declare, Brad and Chris Larson didn't declare they're like leaving the company. But if they did declare that, that would be horrible. Um, so I think XRP, you know, I wouldn't buy them because there's still too much certainty at this point. But like something like EOS, just sell. You know, it's just when he's gone, when when Dan's gone, that's it. I mean, the project is done. All right, guys, I'll leave it at that. So two breaking news. Dan is leaving EO, so I think you should sell. On the flip side, I think you should buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin is definitely a good buy today. Now it's at 35.8, right? I believe you're going to see that bounce pretty soon. Oh, oh. Whenever Bitcoin goes down like this, it always bounces, but... Quite honestly, you can't be panicking right now. You should be panic buying, not panic selling. Derek Clark, thank you for that. And someone else, I don't know if it's you, someone else gave me a $25 super chat. And I I, I saw it, but I, I totally forgot about it, but I appreciate it. Um, when Vegas, well, we got to find a good day. We got to find a good day this year when things settle down, right? I promise you, we're going to all meet in Vegas with our new... Lambos or Ferraris or Teslas and we're gonna have a grand old time. So that day is coming We just have to wait until things die down with the pandemic and so forth. So we don't piss off everyone, right? All right guys, that is it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you smash up the like subscribe to the channel I would say if you have opportunity take advantage of the dip You're not gonna see too many of these while Bitcoin is doing this, right? And of course, follow me on Twitter and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, right? And also, check out my Patreon page if you want more exclusive content you want to chat with me and others. 
And if you want a crash course on Bitcoin, you're brand new, you want a crash course, then check out my P Teachable page. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.